Yo, Crawl here. Today we're going to talk about client events and what events there are. I'm not going to cover all of them, but I, kind of, I will cover most of them so you actually know which ones are important and which ones are not so important and which ones you probably will need and which ones you probably won't need and also which ones are going to be very, very important if you want to do some logging stuff or if you want to have a member log or any, any kind of that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to look at the documentation. I know a lot of people out there don't look at the documentation. We have such a great documentation page, right? You just like, you can find anything. There is nothing you cannot find on it, but you need to know how to read it. And this is what we're going to cover today. So we're going to switch our view to my nice, nice browser here. So the documentation page, when you go to disco.js, you see this and you already see a nice little example right here. So the next thing you do is you click on documentation. Uh, we're going to switch to the 11.1 dev branch, but you, you guys can stay on stable, right? Like don't, don't always do what I do. Like just stay on stable if you use stable and if you use anything else then switch it here, but stay on stable. Usually like 99.9% of you guys should stay on stable. And then we have like examples here. We have some topics we talk about here. And we also have all the classes we have and the type definitions for it. And for the client events, we want to go there to the client class. And we see all of those events here, right? Those are all events you can trigger with your, like you can see that here with the client on message and whatnot else, right? So you can trigger all of those here. And we're gonna just take a stab at a few of them, which ones you probably want to need, which ones you don't want to need. So we start off with like the very simple ones. So we start off with like client.on warn console.warn. What this basically does is every time the client is showing us a warning, it will console log it. This is kind of important because you want to know if, if there's a warning or if there's an error. So you want, you want to have that here. The second one is client.on error, which is which means console uh, error. This is our second very important event. That's the same thing as warn, just a little higher. There's a fourth event we can use here, a third event actually, I'm sorry, which is the debug event. And what the debug event does is it logs all the debug things we have. So you can see that right here, of, uh, authenticated with using the token, using the gateway, the connection we establish. If you're connected and to what you're connected, identifying as a new session, sending a heartbeat, and so on and so on and so on and so on, right? And you see the heartbeat acknowledged right here. So and this, this is going to keep on going. Like you will see the heartbeat acknowledging every single time. and why is this why is this important? Well, if you ever encounter an error and you're not sure if it's the library or if it's a you, I can assure you it's probably you. But if you're really sure it's not you, you need to lock those events because those events are going to help you out in finding out where the error is, getting a nice stack trace. A stack trace is uh, an error message with like, you know, you can go back into it and see like which files are affected where where did it get called like where did it start and where did it end up being uh, errored so you need that but in a production ready bot you, you don't want that like you just comment it out or like remove it it's not important it's not needed the next event we have i usually just try to keep them like somehow in, in a certain order but it doesn't matter next event we have is the disconnect event it doesn't take anything so we can just pull like a console log and be like i just disconnected making sure you know i will reconnect now and adding to that we have another event which is the reconnecting event which also doesn't take anything so you can just directly execute it. And we put in another log which says, I am reconnecting now. Obviously, this is 
you see that I'm always placing those braces there, right? I just need to talk about that because this is also some very important thing many people don't get. If you only have one statement in there, you can literally just remove it and make it like this, right? I'm gonna do this because, I don't know, it's just my coding style. You don't have to do this, but remember, you can. If it's only one statement, you can remove everything and just make it look like this. If you use more than one, you need to use those braces. Otherwise, it's like game over. The next event we're gonna look at is the message event. We already had that, so we don't need to handle that. The other events that we have, well, most of them are not really that important and I don't wanna cover them because if you really need to use them, you already need, you already know how to use those commands here, right? How to use those events. So you already know how to use every single event out there. But a lot of people still have problems with certain events and I'm just gonna cover so, cover because it's gonna cover some of the important guild events. For example, right here, no, I didn't. That right here is the guild member add event emitted when a user joins a guild. So this is what a lot of people wanna have because they wanna greet the new members or whatever they wanna do. I cannot test this and I cannot show you this, but I can, with a hundred percent certainty, show you the code that will work. So. You can do client on guild member add, if I wouldn't typo that. And what this takes is one parameter you wanna pass, and it's gonna be the member. So we pass this, we make it, make a brace there because we're maybe gonna do one more than one thing. So usually in all the versions of Discord.js, we had a guild right there. So you could do guild.member. We don't have that anymore. A lot of people do const guild equals member dot guild, but I feel like this is pointless because now you can do guild dot, what do I know, right? Channels and then you have a collection, uh, but this is pointless. You, you, you're not saving anything, right? Like you can, you can literally just type member dot guild. Like it's the same thing. Like there's, no point in setting a variable right there, like zero. So after we do that, we we have a thing that's called default channel, but we don't want to use that. Discord actually stopped using a default channel not too long ago, it may be a week from this video. And it will be super unreliable. New guilds will not have a default channel anymore. Old guilds, if they delete the default channel, there's no default channel anymore. A default channel basically in the background was just the guild ID was also associated to a channel, which is the, which was the general channel and you could not delete that one. So the guild ID is the guild. If you look for a channel with the guild ID, you will get the general channel. If you look for a role with the guild ID, you get the everyone role, but this doesn't work anymore. So it's not advised to use it. Now here comes the, the hard part about it, because we want to greet people in some way or another. A very easy way to do it is if we just get the channels, which are a collection of channels. Uh, we use the find method on it just for for clarity reasons, because we are on more than one server. We're just going to assume that, so we cannot use one ID. And we find by name, and then we find a channel called YouTube, because this is the channel I'm gonna use for testing purposes. I'm not gonna use it, but actually, you know what, let's just, let's just use member log. And we assign this to a variable, which we're gonna call channel. So now the return will either be the channel or null. If it's null, we can use an easy check and be like, if no channel return. And we're just gonna return out of that function and everything's gonna be all right. Obviously, I'm gonna need to use return undefined here. That we're just gonna return out of it and we're done. But if there is a channel, we obviously wanna greet the member, right? So we have two ways of doing that. We do channel.send and then we can basically greet our member here. So what we can do is we can use 
for string concatenation rate, we use template literals. We do message uh, no, no, member, and this already mentions the guy. And we can do use comma and be welcome to the forsaken place or whatever you want to use. I can't think of anything. I'm super bad at this stuff. And this will already mention it, but a lot of people don't, don't, don't like mentioning people or maybe people get annoyed by mentioning others. So you can use display name. Remember the display name. What this does is it will just use their, uh, their username, basically. Like when they join the server, they won't have a nickname. In theory, when you when a user has a nickname, it will use the nickname. If he doesn't has an, have a nickname, it will use the username. But when they join your server, they they are not gonna have a nickname, so they're gonna use the server name, uh, the, the username. So it's gonna be like username welcome to the forsaken place. Or if you remove that, it's gonna be dimension welcome to the forsaken place. But they but they will get a mention, right? So you. Depends on what you want to do with it. Uh, the same thing we can do with guild member remove. So I'm not going to type this all out, right? Because this is like a hassle to watch otherwise. So if we do guild member remove, we also get a member. And we can also do the same thing. We log to the, to the member log. If there is no channel, we just return undefined. So we just return out of it. And if there is, we mention it. But this cannot really be done, right? Like we cannot really, like the mention would resolve, but at the same time it would not resolve. So it would resolve for you in the moment you're looking at the channel, the moment you restart Discord, you will just see like uh, a bunch of numbers because you may not share the server with that guy anymore and he's gone from your server. Otherwise you could alternatively also use display name here and it would just print out the name. And you obviously would need to change that and be like, it's left the forsaken place, right? Those are the two most important events. A lot of people, a lot of you guys need because you wanna, you wanna do all of that stuff. The other two events I'm gonna cover right now, real quick, real, 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 real quick, is guild create and guild delete because this is what your bot needs when he joins the server. So on guild create, on guild create basically means not your bot creates a guild, but your bot joins a guild. So we pass guild right here because we're gonna build a guild object from, from the library. And what we do here is with the guild object, we know what guild it is. So now it depends on what we wanna do. One thing I already mentioned with the default channel, we cannot, we cannot send a message to default channel anymore. So all, all we can do basically is send a message to the owner at best. Or we can guess, maybe there is a channel called general. Maybe, we don't know. If there is no channel called general, it will not work. But if someone invites your bot, you should at least let the owner know. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna switch back to the documentation and see like guild. And we know when we click on it, we go to the guild class and right here we can see what, what we have access to. And we actually have access to the owner, right? And the owner is a read-only property which returns a guild member, which returns the guild member of the owner. So what we can do right here is if you go back to our editor, we can, we can do guild.owner.send and this will send a message to the guild owner. So we can say, hi, my name is Yumeko and I just joined this, this Discord server because someone with invite rights summoned me here. I'm gonna do this lint disable and Max line right here, otherwise it will error me. So, and this will send a message to the guild owner the moment I join the guild. We can actually have a look at that and see how it looks, but I need to I need to kick her for that and I don't have a link prepared. But 
this is the perfect moment to show off something really really cool so what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove we're gonna remove her from the guild right we just kick her out we don't need a reason for that and she's gone so now she won't respond anymore obviously and what we need to do is we need to start her up make sure she's running and she's like, yo this is ready you can see that here and then there is this nice thing the discord o of 2 ember generator which is discord now.sh right so this is very very cool because right here we can just paste in our client id we get a link we can also set a lot of scopes here we can set a lot of permissions here and extras we don't need anything now we just we just like you see we can do a lot of shit here but like we don't need that we just need add a bot to your server currently so we can just copy the link paste it in here and be done with it and we can invite it to our server and the moment i click this button it will log uh, it will send me a message in discord so how are we going to do this um i'll probably just switch to discord view click the button i'm not a robot because it will ask me that and you see i got a notification there. i got a message so i click on it Hi, my name is Yumiko and I just joined the Cisco server because someone with invite writes summoned me here. And you can see, she's not here. I cannot show you any other channels. Sadly, actually I can show you one because I have nothing in here. And she's actually right here. So I need to put her in a row and I go back here, right? And you can see, she's here, she's working. So if I do Y, ping, boom, pong. And this is practically all we did here. Like this is this is the most important part. And the site I just I just showed you how uh, how you can do that with the permissions and the, the scopes is called discord.now.sh. I'm gonna link that in my description below. And what what is important about the next thing we're gonna do is like the guild remove thing, which is the last thing I'm gonna cover in this video. yeah so we don't want to do anything special on that because uh, it's called guild delete by the way uh we also got a guild back here but we don't want to do anything special on it so this is all you should do in here is maybe console log and say i just left guild you know what, I always forget those template literals. I just left guild, guild.name and guild.id so we might know which ID it is also. And that's about it, you shouldn't do more in here. Everything else that is down here should mainly be either logging to another Discord channel that you just left the guild, which is just console log to, which it's pretty the same thing a log channel maybe if you have one or clean up your databases uh, of that guild entry because you don't need it anymore you you should not send or try to attempt to send a message to the guild owner that you just left the server because that wouldn't make sense like this this should or like only be used for cleanup purposes or if your bot is on a stat site like discord bots or DB bots, right? You should maybe not like do anything stupid in here. Like, I'm gonna cover DB bots too, but yes, you should like it is advised to use it on guild delete and guild create and maybe on ready. The problem is you shouldn't use it on ready because I'm pretty sure you guys are restarting your bot pretty often, so you're gonna spam the API. But on guild create and guild delete, it's completely fine to log those stats to those stat sites where your bot is hosted on. So they they get statistics of your bot so they can see, oh, this bot is already in a thousand servers, so it must be good, right? And this is where you would also send your stats back and reduce the number by one or by two or by three, or depending on how many guilds you leave daily or you join daily. And this is gonna be all for me today. We covered a few events. I talked a lot about them. I showed you how you can do, I can send message to the owner, how you uh, can send message to dedicated channel, uh, member log. And yeah, we're gonna see 
more of that in the next video.